So you know what the coolest thing about being a wildlife photographer is? Getting to wear adult size onesies to work. What's up guys, Jared Lloyd here. I am on the eastern shore of Maryland right now to photograph ducks while they're right at the peak of their breeding plumage. So when it comes to bird photography, we can pretty much distill everything down to two types of photographs. The first, of course, are portraits, and the second is bird in flights. And it's bird in flights that I want to actually talk to you a little bit about today. You see, photographing ducks in flight is probably about the most challenging situation you can find when it comes to actually photographing birds like this. Uh, some of these species, such as the canvasbacks, can fly up to 70 miles an hour, and they're only about the size of a football. So if you can master photographing ducks in flight, you can master anything that the avian world is going to throw at you. But to do that, first and foremost, you have to be able to master the autofocus settings that are necessary for keeping up with these sort of animals like that. So Nikon and Canon go about this stuff a little bit differently. And to be honest with you, Canon cameras are a little bit more straightforward in terms of your autofocus settings. So in general, when we're in the field with wildlife photography, we want to work with the smallest autofocus area mode that we can come up with. When it comes to portraits and stuff like that, we're working with single points. When we're working with large mammals that are on the move, we go a little bit wider than a single point, but we still want something relatively tight and relatively small so that way we can control the situation as much as possible. And that way we kind of remove all of the potential variables out there. But when it comes to birds in flight, especially ducks, especially animals that are moving upwards of 70 miles an hour through the air, we need all the help that we can get. And so with Canon cameras, first and foremost, we want to go ahead and make sure that we're shooting these guys at expanded nine point autofocus. Very simple. That's going to give us enough room to be able to lock onto the bird and as that bird comes in with some sort of erratic flight pattern, those expanded points right there are going to help us hold focus even if we start to slip and we start to fail in our techniques in the field. Now with Nikon, things are a little bit different. Any camera that's been made since, let's say, the Nikon D5, D850, or the D500, what you want to do is shoot with D25. That's dynamic 25 point. Anything made before the D5, you want to shoot with dynamic 9 point. And that has everything in the world to do with the number of autofocus points that are actually inside of these different cameras. So when the 5 series came out, Nikon added additional autofocus points to their sensors, and so that ultimately made all all of the autofocus area modes smaller and so that's why we shoot at 25 points with the more modern day Nikon cameras. Photographing ducks in flight is hands down one of the most challenging situations that you're going to find when photographing wildlife in the field. And there's so much more to this than just simply understanding what autofocus pattern that you should be working with. But this is your starting point. You need to understand this sort of stuff first before you can master birds in flight. But if this is something you want to learn more about, if you want to finally come to terms with mastering bird and flight, then you're definitely going to want to check out the upcoming edition of the Photographer's Journal, where I'm going to dive deep into all of the nuances of photographing these animals in flight.